Howdy, folks. I'm Mark Newfield with Journey Strategic Wealth and this week's edition of planning for high income individuals and families. I don't usually use graphics. Given the subject and the amount of history we're talking about, I decided to use the blog that I wrote this week on this topic, the topic being your brain, your money and war. It's not the most pleasant topic. Unfortunately, it's something that as a society happens fairly often and our reactions are actually pretty predictable. Um, this tends to raise fear in everyone uh, and it's on everybody's mind whether people are asking or not. So I wanna cover it. Now, do I think that this is potentially the start of World War III? I, I personally don't, but could it be? Sure, it could be. Um, you know, there are all kinds of things on TikTok and, you know, X or Twitter or whatever you want to call it that discuss this. Some people are on the yes side. Some people are on the no. I have no idea what the right answer is and what's going to happen. And I don't think anybody else does either. What I can tell you is looking at history and going back to the biggest event that most of us will probably be really aware of is Pearl Harbor that was a 307 day market impact. That is the market was negative and then recovered over a 307 day period. It was 143 days to the bottom from Pearl Harbor and the total temporary reduction in value was a little bit less than 20% at 19 minus 19.8. Uh, but in every instance, whether it be uh, the bombing of Syria, the Boston Marathon, uh, the 9-11 attacks. Uh, there was a, a temporary reduction in value, sometimes as short as one or two days, um, and then recovery. Now, in terms of the market in general since 1950, in every single year we've had uh, what's called a drawdown, that is a reduction in value. Typically, you have what's called a peak to trough to peak process in every single year that averages about 13%. If we go back to 1973, we had a very significant negative year in the almost 25%, followed in 74 by a minus 37 or 38% year, followed in 1975 by a, a minus almost 15% year. So that was pretty painful. Uh, we had a similar set of events in uh, the tech crash, you know, around 2000. Uh, and then, of course, there was the um, great financial crisis. The recovery from the tech crash was close to seven years and close to five years on the great financial crisis. So those recoveries were much longer and harder than the uh, war recoveries. So I think the question then becomes, what do you do about it? Well, here's what we know. When we have any market drawdown of more than about 10%, fear tends to engage, your fight or flight mechanism engages. And the question becomes, is there something I can do to alleviate this, make it better, avoid a loss? So I call that the flight decision do I fly to another investment allocation or, or cash or gold or silver, or do I fight and stay where I am and keep doing what I'm doing? So let's talk about that a little bit. When we look at gold since 1995, the S&P 500 has far outperformed it. If we look on a longer time horizon, that outperformance is far, far greater. So if you're thinking about, you know, gold is a safe store of value, well, you could call it that in the very near term where we have these, you know, price rises here during inflationary times or during a market drawdown. But in terms of the long term, your store of value is in the stock market. It has a lot more vol volatility, but it's also a better store of value. I've got a lot of supporting data for that. Uh, I'm not going to go through it all. But let's talk about just what the difference is. 
So let's go back to 1975. We had a drawdown in 73, a bigger drawdown in 74, followed by a drawdown in 75. You're probably feeling pretty bad about your market investments. So you take your $100,000 and put it in gold. And you like the stability of gold and you like the fact that you can put your hands on it and you just leave it there. Well, by the time we get to today, you've got $400,000, roughly a 3% inflation adjusted rate of return. Not terrible. You, you've got more money than you started with and it's done better than inflation. Let's say that we were in U.S. stocks and we left our money there. Well, today we've got 1.6 million. That inflation adjusted rate of return is more like 6%. And you've got four times as much wealth. So to me, the answer is very clear. Fighting is much better than flighting. So the bottom line on all this is Generally, the best answer in times of very high stress is to do nothing. And that is really doing what you've been doing. Assuming that you're saving and, and growing wealth over time. That doing nothing mentally, behaviorally is really hard. And at the same time, it is immensely rewarding. So like all other markets, if you're willing to tolerate the risk, which in this case is nothing other than volatility. It's not actually risk of losing your money, at least historically, and at least in a diversified portfolio. The return is there for you. And it's very, very hard to do. I hope you find this useful. We love feedback. Please let us know if there's a topic you'd like us to cover.